Okay, so same procedure. Uh, got the battery pod uh, ready to go. I have welded some little uh, hooks onto this one to make it easier. Um, <clears throat> put the same hooks on this side actually as well, just so I can hook it around and things. Anyway, so I'm just going to hoist this up now and do the same for this one. I need to clean this up a bit first actually. Somebody in the last video, they saw I was struggling to get that masking tape off and said, you know, use WD-40, which I tried on this and it worked a lot better, actually, to be fair. It, uh, I mean, you still have to scrub, but I found using this, one of those little spongy scouring rag things and WD-40 and it did actually come off a lot easier. So I've just uh, temporarily, let me just get this off. Yeah, so I cleaned it all and I just made this uh, temporary little 3D printed cap to go on. Um, so that was a good tip. Thanks, whoever that was. I mean, maybe maybe there is some point in doing this channel after all. Right, let's get this on. So there's quite a bit of measuring here. So what I've done is I've measured from the middle of that rib down to here. Now the actual, um, the arc segment should be 281. And as I've fallen, I'm actually 283. So I'm taking that as a pretty good, a pretty good win. I think the discrepancy of my two millimeters probably come from the fact that I drilled this hole and that would have been at 281. And then by the time I've done the grinding, it's just moved it either way so I'm actually at 283 to there and then on the other side here to the seam uh, the weld seam and I'm 283 again so that's correct there um, I know it's not very interesting this but it is quite critical so my reference point on the hull is the tower uh, so if I just hold that there, and with this ex very unscientific method, that there is at 45 degrees, as you can see with the builder's spirit level. Um, I actually bought this new gadget. It's just a little mini... Uh, grinder which means I can get under here and I don't use the air tools very often but sometimes they come in handy because uh, there's no motor so anyway I can, I can get under here now just to get this little bit of uh, weld spatter off Okay, so that's that tidied up. Now, next step is I've got to get this out. This is the brace. Now, I think yeah, so it is moving, so. There we go, that's out, right. Uh, so next step is to get in here. 
So I'm going to go in here with the uh, with the 2.5 stick um, because I think it'd be easier than getting in with a TIG. I haven't got a lot of room here, so it'd be difficult to get in uh, with the TIG torch. But should we go to park? You want to get to park? Let's get to the park. Right, so I'm just going to go in with the uh, with the stick round there. Biggest problem. So I've just got to be careful with the dog. This uh, dog is not frightened of welding at all. Double check it's the right rod. Jeez. So, quite pleased how that turned out. Um, it's not an easy joint to get down into that route. But the good thing is I've got, well, I've got three passes to go on it yet. That's only taking it to flush. I'm just letting it cool down. Um, but the good thing is that if there are any um, errors on the route pass, I can get to them from the other side. So when I flip it over, I'll back gouge and just double check that I've got all the way through. So same again for this side. Right, I've done the other side. Uh, really, you'll need to get a new wire brush. Anyway. So I think that one's ready for the uh, for the final passes as well. So, uh, not there yet, but six more runs, three on that one, three on that one. So that's it done all the way around uh, on both. So these are all these are all complete now. Okay, so these are all done now. Uh, just clean them up a bit.
So I was going to uh, flip it over now and put it on its feet, but actually I've got to make the skids, uh, which I haven't really designed yet. Um, the ones I did on Jody B and Skadok were wooden skids and they work perfectly fine. Uh, but I was trying to keep this as low to the ground as possible and I want to make it, them really easy to come on, on and off. So I'll have a think about that. Um, and I need to fit the bar for the drop weights. So I'm going to, I'm going to get that 20 mil bar. We haven't got that in stock and I need to get the tube for the drop weights. Now I need to just double check my, my CAD drawings, but I'm pretty sure um, I designed them at 86 millimeters, which was, was basically the biggest that I could fit in. And then I just thought, well, I'll get whatever I can nearer, nearest to that. Uh, so I need to get some pipe of some sort, uh, and get the, the drop weight bar attached. So that, that, that's going to be for next week is fitting the skids and the drop weight bar and possibly making these, uh, the through hole, the drop weight uh, shaft assembly. Then I can get it flipped over on, onto its own feet. All right, do you want to go home then? Shall we go home? All right, we'll go home. I have to go to pack up first. <laughs>